Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 264 in our series. We're continuing with our lesson, The Beginning of Sorrows. This will be part 7 in this series. We want to take a look at a principle that <clears throat> I don't believe is being taught. But the Bible gives us understanding <clears throat> we're entering into an alternate reality, an alternate state of existence. At the time in which the Lord intervenes, the current reality, the current system, will forever be changed. Let me quickly answer the question again. Yes. Does organized religion or anyone else recognize a reality shift or change at the beginning of Sorrows? No. Do they recognize that the Age of Judgment begins at the beginning of Sorrows? No. Okay. They look at things as a continual progression <clears throat> ending in the coming of the Lord. Right. Everything is seen on a linear basis from a human perspective mm -hmm. in which <clears throat> if that's pursued a person will never come to an understanding until he's actually involved in experiencing right. the things that the scripture is talking about. Turn to Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 23. <coughs> Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse, altered from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So what's being said here, when <coughs> this kingdom is released, it will be uniquely <coughs> different from any other kingdom that has ever existed in the time of man's existence on the earth. Its reality, its state of being is going to envelop the whole earth. It says it will devour the whole earth. The current reality that we exist in is designed for the Adamic race to exist and flourish. This reality is designed for non-human existence. Intelligences that are far superior to the human race are going to exist here, commingling with the human race, dominating the human race because of its superior state of existence. At what point do the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, all of the wicked of the earth from the human perspective, understand we've been tricked, it's all over. They will never. They will never. Unless you understand it beforehand, you're going to come into the, con the contact with the, an intelligence, a, 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 a superior state of existence, you'll never understand. But since... <clears throat> if you have no exposure to Scripture at all, so then you're going to be in total confusion. If you have involved, if you have some scripture in your, then the pieces will come together for but you. But you're looking at it from the scriptural point of view, as, as we would look at it. I'm looking at it, I'm talking about the wicked of the earth, the humans, the tares, who don't know anything at all except for what they've been told by the Luciferians. Turn to Daniel 12. At the point the Luciferians rise, when do those people I'm talking about recognize we've been tricked? Turn to Daniel 12. Daniel 12. <coughs> My answer still stands. Okay. Verse 8. To 10. Of course, yes. I heard, but I understood not. Right. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall 
do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. They will never understand. So they're always going to believe that this is what they've been working towards. They're going to believe a million and one different pseudo impressions okay. in their mind, in their brain, which mean absolutely nothing. Right. Depending on whichever they encounter. Okay. So they'll believe anything that anybody tells them. Right. They have no idea. So they're, they're, they're zombies from that point. Essentially. Yeah, they have no way of gauging. That's why, you know, the scripture doesn't, it doesn't warn in vain. <clears throat> this side of the judgment, get what's needful. Get wisdom, get understanding. Enter into harmony with the Holy Spirit. Right. So you can be prepared for these things. When these things happen, it's too late then. You see, I'm raising this question because we all know people who believe that when something terrible happens, I mean, they, everyone knows that you know, the Lord is coming, blah, 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 something's mm -hmm. going to happen. They all think that they're able to have conscious thought, able to deduce this, have objectivity, understand it. They have no concept that the moment that this line is crossed, they can't think anymore. That's it. That's it. Because they haven't been told. Yeah. They have no imagination to comprehend these things. They see things from a linear human perspective. And they projected everything. They look at heaven from a human perspective. Sure. They look at the future from a human perspective. The Bible says that they will look from a continuous linear perspective until the end. Mm. That's why the human race is doomed, with the exception of those whose names are in the book of life. Amen. <clears throat> And the weight of the judge is going to fall heavily, heavily, heavily on leadership, which went out of its way to keep its people ignorant so that they could continue to have authority over them. Right. <clears throat> Jesus made a statement. He said, the blind leading the blind, both will fall in the ditch. Hmm. But let's go on. <clears throat> so the scripture tells us in no uncertain terms that this reality which will manifest with this coming kingdom will be unique, unlike anything that went before it. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Scripture teaches, man will be dominated by superior beings who will both terrorize and deceive him. We're going to look at an example of this. An example is illustrated by the actions of the of the two mighty beings called death and hell. Now these individuals are not seen for what they are. When the scripture is read and I've never heard a sermon or message given that puts them in the true light of what they are. <clears throat> whenever they see the word death and whenever they see the word hell they attribute it to a place. Sure. Death and hell as you read the scripture have three, three three significant meanings. It can mean a place, it can mean a being, it can mean a condition, state of existence. It has to do with the context of the scripture in which it's being presented. We're going to see where it's presented in all three. <clears throat> Revelation the sixth chapter, verse eight. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, Thanatos in the Greek. In hell, Hades, followed with him, and power, authority, was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. These are two mighty ascended fallen beings who have dominion over two specific regions in eternity. One region is called death, the other region is called hell. <clears throat> Turn to Job 38. 
has been led to give you an example of this. 28. 38. <clears throat> Here, Elohim speaking to Job. We're going to pick it up. Verse 17. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? These are regions in the subterranean <coughs> matrix, earth matrix. Souls go down to this region called death. There's a gate that opens, and once it opens, that soul goes in, it closes, that soul never comes back out again. It is an inhabitant of the region called death. Hell has the same thing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, would you, would you yeah. describe it as those principalities, hell and death, now own that soul? Yes. Okay. Oh, for, yes. For eternity? Uh, yes, until the time of the judgment. Okay. Which we will cover later on. Right. But yes. Now, Scripture teaches <clears throat> souls killed by them then go down to be imprisoned in the subterranean region of hell or death over which they rule. For instance, it talks about these two are given authority to smite the earth over a quarter of the human race will experience <clears throat> death by various means. Say, for instance, the one on the horse, who is death, smites 10,000 people, kills them outright. A plague, an uh, uh, earthquake, or whatever it is he chooses, those 10,000 souls <coughs> go down to his region. <coughs> and they're, they're, they're captured until the time of the judgment. This is happening today. People are dying and going either to the region of death, the region of hell. What determines which region they'll end up in? The, the being that engineers the demise. Okay, not necessarily the person's own behavior. Uh, well, that can be too, because you have the law of sin and death. Okay. <coughs> Everything works in harmony with each other. Depends upon what the actions of the person, depends upon the connection that they have. If they belong to the Lord, then they're not going to have any connection at all with any okay. event that's going to take place between the actions of death or hell. Mm. If they don't, a person gets killed in a drive-by. A person gets wiped out in an air crash. Uh, somebody else slips on a banana peel and gets killed. All this is engineered by the spirits, which people seem to think it's an accident. Sure, not. of course it's not. It's, it's engineered. Do you believe that those who worship um, what they call Santeria, they worship the, the person of death the, part, the moment they start worshipping that person, does he have their soul? Certainly. Okay. Certainly. And that connection is fixed forever from that point on. So therefore, that, when that person dies, that person doesn't go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Exactly. He's lined himself up with that being. Right. <clears throat> Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches, at the time of the great judgment, these souls will be called forth and stand before God. They're going to be called out of the region of death, out of the region of hell. Revelation 20, verse 13. The sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Here you have, <clears throat> when it says death and hell gave up the souls that were them, you're talking about the place of the souls. 
when it talks about death and hell, we're given authority over a quarter of the human race. You're talking about the beings called death and hell. <clears throat> yes. So when the sea gives up the dead, do they go to death or do they go to hell? No, they go to before the great right throne judgment. The sea is the place that's being giving, giving up the souls. This is talking about the great sea that we have had lessons about, <clears throat> which is currently blocked. <clears throat> And within it, you have beings, civilizations, kingdoms, that during the tribulation period, you're going to have access to the earth. <clears throat> the sea is going to dominate the earth. Okay. When <clears throat> things happen on the sea, because there are going to be tremendous judgments that happen on the sea, people are going to die on the sea, and their soul is going to go down to the, the neither regions of this sea and be in prison until they're later on released the great white throne judgment. So yes. the sea sounds like an entity that will be judged at some point. No, it's a place. An it's a region. So do you describe the humans who have been taken by the sea as being abducted? No. They will they, they, they are on the sea. You have, you're going to have um, a system of, of, of a mercantile system Okay. which is <coughs> going to be by land and by sea in the tribulation period. So this is run by the princes of the sea? Yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> you read about them in Ezekiel 28th chapter. Yes. They come down from their thrones and they mourn mm -hmm. when the harlot city is wiped out. Well, these are the guys that control the sea. <clears throat> Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches these two beings will so terrify the human race that the religious leaders in Jerusalem will forsake their relationship with YHVH and make a covenant with them, death and hell. Isaiah 28, <coughs> verses 14 to 18. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. It's talking about the religious leaders <clears throat> during the tribulation period. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. So they make agreement with these two beings. Why? <clears throat> to keep them from terrorizing them in their r r ritual traversing of the earth. <clears throat> when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. This is the covenant <clears throat> that later on the uh, <clears throat> Antichrist is going to expand should we understand therefore for that period of the covenant they the Jews believe that nobody among them will die yeah of anything well <clears throat> then it's not that anybody won't die it's that they they're gonna see these beings as they roam over the earth wiping out everything okay. they make a covenant with both of them that when they traverse over the earth they're gonna spare Jerusalem and wipe out whatever else it is that they want. They, they, they get their word that they're going to do this. Right. In turn for what? Allegiance. Worship. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if it, if it uh, extended to you know, the natural order of death. But, but not no, death, no, no. People are going to still die. But what they're doing is they're trying to alleviate this terror of mm -hmm. these two beings. They're terrorizing the whole human race. <clears throat> and the Lord here, this is, um, <clears throat> this is Elohim, is saying... You think you have an agreement with these two. Uh, you're going to make an agreement with lies and falsehood, with beings that <laughs> don't keep their word. You think they're going to spare you. And he goes on to talk about it. 
verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. What is this he's talking about? Jesus. Exactly. The new covenant in Christ. <laughs> where does the Lord, where does Elohim threaten hell and death and tell them that he has a, I forgot the word that was used, a controversy, let me use that term, against them? Uh, well, I don't know about that. Well, we see, we see um, death fleeing from people who, die, who want to die. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's in Revelation, um, about the ninth chapter. But that's doing it has to do with a judgment that uh, <coughs> the sons of God render during the tribulation period, in which they tell death and hell. That's it. Hands off. All right. And so death <laughs> takes a <laughs> quick hike. Please, okay. Verse 17, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand, when the overflowing scourge, in other words, when they pass over, shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. So he's telling them, you think these guys are going to keep their word? Well, next time they come around, you're going to be one of the first ones to witness the stupidity of what you put your trust in. Right. So the Lord here hasn't influenced death and hell to make sure that they don't keep the agreement. That's just their natural yeah. characteristic. Sure. You can't make a deal with the devil. Sure. <clears throat> People sell their soul, they think they're getting something for nothing. <clears throat> yeah. They're paying a heavy price that they never realized that they were paying. Amen. Same thing is going to be true with this. These guys, well, this is during the time of YHVH's dominion over Jerusalem. And this is even before the beast makes his appearance. Mm. And these guys are going to forsake YHVH, put him on a, a side, and try to deal with these two through giving them their loyalty, their obedience, and all the rest of it. Well, let's go on. <coughs> <coughs> Scripture teaches, at the end, death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire with the rest of the Luciferian leadership. Revelation 20, verse 14. and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So they're the last to go into the torment regions <coughs> at the time of the resurrection unto death. <coughs> that seals it. After that, they answer, answer the millennial period. Yes. So death and hell are cast in the lake of fire and everybody that they have absorbed in their in their lake and are going to hell or in the lake of fire with yes. them. Yeah. Yes. Yes indeed. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches now this is where the sons of God, the Prototokos and the believers come in. <clears throat> Scripture teaches before the release of these the wise and faithful servants of the Lord will have been filled with the power of God and be doing mighty works. John 14, verse 12.
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. This has not happened as of yet. Why? Because of organized religion. When this is done away with, this reality here, and all that stuff is done away with, and God assembles the church, gathers his people together, <clears throat> the principal people, the movers and shakers, the teachers, are going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit doing the things that Jesus did and greater. Amen. Yes. Mr. Jones, when the gathering happens, mm -hmm. are there going to be those of us who should be teachers there and are being taught? No. No. No, they won't make the gathering. God's not going to put up with that nonsense. Only those that are 100% committed are going to make the gathering. Because those that are 100% committed <clears throat> who have fed his sheep go on to enter into their inheritance mm -hmm. and become rulers over his whole household. Amen. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates although the fourth empire will appear. It cannot manifest these beings until the powerful sons of God are gone. You're going to see the fourth empire appear, beginning of sorrows, but you're not going to see these beings appear until after the rapture. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verse five to eight. Mm. Are you only including death and hell when you say these beings? No, I'm including all the beings that you see resonant in the second half of the tribulation period. Okay. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verses 5 to 8. Remember you not, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. So what you find here, Paul outlined everything to the church <coughs> before this was written. The scrolls that he gave were lost by the church. That's why <coughs> they came under a judgment. Because they were to be custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens, they failed. So a judgment came on them and they wound up coming under the world church and all the nonsense that went with that. Anyway, <clears throat> for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth or restrains will let until he be taken out of the way. So as long as the restrainer is here, <clears throat> those that are walking the earth in the power of Christ, doing the works of Christ, and greater, <clears throat> death and hell and all the rest, the beast and all the rest of them right. cannot manifest. Notice what it goes on to say. Verse 8, Then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth shall destroy with the brightness of his coming so all those that you see in the second half <coughs> the uh, war god all the capital G gods mm -hmm. the beast they're not be going to be able to appear until after the restraining is gone you're going to have lesser gods that are the cutting edge. Okay. 
that uh, basically uh, are the tidal waves that sweep over the earth and establish this new reality. And for, what, 20, 30 years, that's what's going to prevail. The harlot city, the kings, <clears throat> and their sorcery. But then they're going to be taken down because after the rapture takes place, which is before that, <clears throat> the way is going to be wide open for those of the highest power to assume authority over the surface world. If, not if, because those that let it hold back the Luciferians with the highest power by their letting, how is it that those with the those Luciferians with the lowest power are able to go about their business on the surface at the same time that those who let are physically because they don't present any threat. Okay. Those with the power are dealing with the prototokis, teaching, ministering, preparing the saints for the rapture. They're in the communities. These other guys are outside doing their thing. So there's no climax here until after the rapture when they sweep over the rest of the world and you have a new situation taking place. Mm. Since they know, they, the Luciferians, the more powerful ones, know that, um, in fact, even before the gathering, that groups of Prototokos are teaching, studying, so on and so forth, and they know that they can't you know, uh, go against them in any way. I'm sure they've just been told, don't even think about it, you know, be, 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 <coughs> we'll send Brother Brace after you. So once they once they understand that, at what point do they think that they can come against Christ? And the reason I'm asking this question is because we see towards Revelation nine or ten or somewhere somewhere in, in that area, mm -hmm. the unholy three, as I call them, mm -hmm. send out demons against their own compatriots mm -hmm. to confuse and uh, give them some kind of some kind of you know, delusion that. Christ is right there and he's going to come and deal with them uh, immediately. Well, what they're doing is to gather them against the Lord that they know is going to invade with the saints. Right. But uh, that's a different, a whole different thing. But turn to Revelation 12, chapter. Okay. <clears throat> Revelation 12, verse 4 to 5. And his, the dragon's, mm -hmm. tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and he cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Mm -hmm. So, what they're going to try to do is to <coughs> dominate the restrainer through their power, through their influence before the rapture. Remember, the restraint is holding them back. Well, Satan is going to marshal his forces and try to overcome them sometime just before the rapture because he's already taken the heavens, a third of the heavens, kicked out a third of the stars, and he wants to dominate the earth at this point. Sure. But he, Satan, doesn't believe that um, if he fails to do so, then it's all over for him because he still continues after the, the rapture. Well, happened. he doesn't realize what he's up against okay. at this point. Notice what it goes on to say. Verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up, caught up. That's the rapture unto God and to his throne. So what he's dealing with here is he's seeing the power manifest, the glorification. He, he didn't have a clue okay. of what was happening. He sees the saint operating in the power of Christ, uh, doing the works of Christ. He gets power amalgamated so that he can take out a third of the angels of the heavens, and then he's going to try to come down and deal with those same saints that have been the restrainer, thinking now he's got more power to do it. Okay. Rapture takes place, the glorification takes place, wipes him on his tail, and uh, 
the, the, the curtain is shut on that. You, you said it because he thinks he now has more power to do it. That's the clean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he can still attack the left behind Christians. Which he does. Mm. He takes over the world, him and uh, <coughs> the Luciferians. This opens the door for <coughs> the things that are going to come uh, into play during the tribulation period, which are controlled by the sons of God. They don't have a clue as to what God's plan is and the power that's going to be exerted. They understand, they're used to manipulating <clears throat> through the corrupted wisdom humans. They don't realize that according to the Father's plans, they're going to be just as manipulated as the humans they right. once manipulated right. by the sons of right. God. Yes. The beauty of this is that at this point, everybody has an opportunity to get in on the ground floor. Amen. If they so choose. Well, the ones that were being manipulated, will be manipulated, will they know they're being manipulated? Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, the difference between here and there is people don't know they're being manipulated here. Exactly. The only way they can find out is to have the Holy Spirit give them the understanding that they're being manipulated. And the only way you can do that is totally commit and be born again and begin serving the Lord. Let's use these truths, absolutely. People like to play games, head games with themselves, <coughs> thinking, and that's a, that's a manipulation right there. Satan delights in doing that, making Christians rationalize doing what they know they shouldn't be doing, but making it all right and bringing themselves into a state of bondage through doing it, perpetuating it. <clears throat>